And good evening, I'm Sean Green and welcome to tonight, tonight's edition of a Sports Night. Well, the West Indies will have to go through to the qualifying process to make it into the 2019 World Cup, needing to defeat England 5-0 or 4-0 in the ongoing ODI series to overhaul 8th place Sri Lanka in the ODI rankings and secure a spot in the 50-over showpiece in England in the next two summers. The Windies never looked apart in today's opening match at Old Trafford as the host won by seven wickets. Winning the toss and electing to bat in the rain-affected day-night match, which was reduced to 42 overs per side, the Windies posted a below par, 204 for nine of their 50 overs. Ben Stokes grabbed three for 43, while Ali Rashid and Chris Wokes stuck two wickets apiece. Now, Captain Jason Holder top scored with 41 not out, while opener Chris Gale chipped in with 37, and Shea Hope had 35. Likes it in that arc. Oh. Watch out in the crowd. Mm. Willie not happy with himself. It's nicely controlled. A good catch. It's a length ball to mid off. Extra cover, chance, chance. Oh, what a catch, Joe Root. Oh, this will run away for four. Someone out there, it should be caught. It is. Yeah, it's a tickle down the leg side. Butler and Stokes were convinced, but Robinson has signalled a wide. He doesn't think it's hit anything. Morgan does reviews that England thinks just tickle the glove. Right, uh, it's um, it's here. Ball goes high into the air and should be taken. No, down it goes. Very nicely played. Heaved away into the deep. Hales can do nothing about it. Oh, heave leg side, Hales is in business. Good catch. Chip down the ground, should be out, is out. Straight to long off. Hit towards long on, and goes for four. Goes for the dab, he misses it, he's bowled round his legs. Bouncer again over the keeper. This should run away. Third man could cut it off. Doesn't. It's gone a long way up. They will cross, but they will take an easy catch. Chipped over mid off. It's well struck, actually. It's plugged in the outfield. And Holder will think about coming back for three. Just two scored. And Jason Holder has given them a slim chance. He remains 41 not out, West Indies scored 204. Well, that 204 for nine came off 42 overs. Now, in reply, an unbeaten 100 from opener Johnny Bairstow saw England to 210 for three in 30.5 overs. Now, Bairstow, who finished on exactly 100 of 97 deliveries, built a solid 125-run partnership with Joe Root, who made 54 from 53. Now, none of the Windies bowlers threatened with Keswick Williams taking two for 50 from six overs. The second ODI is set for Thursday at Trent Bridge. In tennis news, victories by Barbados's number one and number two tennis players, Darren King and Hayden Lewis, on this, the second reserve day of their encounter with Venezuela, have ensured promotion back into Group 1 of the Davis Cup America Zone. Now King leveled the rubber at a two-all, winning a hard-fought reverse singles game from Ricardo Rodriguez, which started back on Sunday. And CBC's Anamri Burke was there at the tennis center in Wilde for the conclusion. King started the day's play leading the set at 5-2, needing just one game to close out the set, but it wasn't going to be that easy. Actually, Darian dropped the first three games as Rodriguez came with guns blazing, making King work to stay alive, and when the chances came, he buried him. But in true style, Darian has the heart of a lion and rallied back in the final two games, 
nicely finished at the net. Set point, Rodriguez has the serve. King returns strongly and the rally was a long one. The drop shot was saved and he beats Rodriguez at the net. It's all leveled. Darian pulls it back to win at 7-5. So it's one set apiece. The third set served up the same competitive action. Both players going at it hard. A nice recovery by Rodriguez, but King had the final say. Actually, King only dropped two games in this third set to claim it at 6-2. So time to wrap things up, but it won't be a walk in the park as the Venezuelan was going down fighting to a nail. This was a classy shot, beating King to his right. And then he gifted King some points. This return is out of court, Barbados inching their way to leveling things up. King with the serve and the exchanges were as usual, making an entertaining game. A nice cross-court return picked up by Rodriguez and switching it up, a softer touch gives King the point. Game, set and match point. King's serve is picked up and there is a good return. The anticipation builds in the Bajan camp and then it happens. Rodriguez goes long. Out of court, it's all over. King takes a hard-fought match at 5-7, 7-5, 6-2, 6-3. Pretty tough. Um, a lot of ups and downs. Um, as you say, we had to come back for for three days, um, which I was hoping that it would have ended on Sunday. But I guess it gave me some time to get my thoughts together. Um, obviously, I know I knew his strategy was to pretty much try to make a lot of balls, try to keep me out there as long as possible after our doubles match play for four hours. But for me, I guess I'm glad that I fought through it. I was pretty happy to get through this match and to get Barbados back to two two all in this tie. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Well, Lewis then sealed the deal for Barbados winning rubber five, also in four sets against uh, Luis Martinez. Now, Luis's victory meant that Barbados won the Davis Cup round three against Venezuela three to two. This time, CBC's Mark Seal reports. Lewis in the far court wasn't pleased. In this, the first set. Here, he was receiving an easy diet of balls in his backhand from Martinez. Yet, he sailed this shot long for an unforced error. Martinez taking the first game and Lewis showing his frustration. The Barbados veteran would only win two games in this first set as Martinez on serve wins the final game of the set with another unforced error by Lewis. Lewis going down six games to two. Lewis would bounce back in the second set as early as the first game. Serving wide to set up the easy passing shot. That's one love. Martinez would however level the set at four all, continuing his attack on Lewis's backhand to take this game at love. But that would be the last game for the Venezuelan in this second set. Continuing his strategy, it would be he who would hit long and Lewis takes that second set 6-4. The match is now leveled at one all. Third set, and Lewis started hot, bringing the gas on his serves. This one, an ace, out wide, 15 love. This was followed by another ace, out wide again, 30 love. And clearly, Lewis saw a weakness in Martinez's backhand, cause here we go again, boom, game to Lewis. Serving for the set now, and Lewis, more gas, as Martinez sends the ball weak and wide. Two serves later, and Martinez is caught wrong-footed as he tried to guess where the serve was going. Set point, another ace. This one up the middle that Martinez barely got a racket on. Six free to Lewis, and he now leads two sets to one. This was one of the top shots of the match. Martinez was sticking to his game plan, but he decided to switch it up, hitting wide in Lewis's forehand. But check the passing shot by Lewis, hitting the return perfectly inside the lines. Lewis with another signature power ace, this one up the middle, as Martinez's stretch wasn't elastic enough. Game, set, and match point. Lewis with the classical setup. The service out wide, 
He then placed the return into the opposite corner and on approaching the net, he executes the cross-court volley for the winner. Lewis taking the set six games to four and the match three sets to one. Much to the delight of Team Barbados. I'd just like to dedicate this win to um, my little cousin, uh, Michael Marshall, who sadly, about three weeks ago, took his life. So that's been on my mind. Um, I didn't get to see him much, but whenever we saw each other, we were very close. So I just wanted to dedicate, win or lose, I wanted to dedicate this for him. That's the beauty of playing five sets. You know, there's a long way to go. Uh, it took me a while to get going. It had me very frustrated that we stopped for almost, I don't know how long, and then the referee didn't really want to give us a full warm up again after sitting down there for a problem that was with the ITF or nothing to do with the players. Um, so, and it would have definitely been in Louis' favor because he was returning. Um, so that had me frustrated from the start and it took a little while to get over from that. But um, once I found a way really, I had to let my frustration out. Um, even if I got the warning and whatnot. And then I felt much better after that and just started putting points together and then slowly getting myself into the match and then taking control. Barbados, welcome back to Group 1 Davis Cup Tennis. Mark Seal, CBC Sports. And more sports coming your way after the break. Oh my God. This is too big. He wants to grow up to be a superhero. How about that? I just want him to grow up to be healthy. But he was falling behind on the growth curve. A normal diet alone wasn't enough. So his pediatrician recommended two PediaSure per day. Each bottle has seven grams of protein and 25 essential vitamins and minerals. Mm. Tastes good, right? It fits now, huh? He's yeah. not just gaining weight, he's catching up. Two PediaSure per day is clinically shown to help gain weight in just eight weeks. PediaSure, gain on. New on Morning Barbados. I know I'm ready to hit the spot, and I'm bringing along a friend. This one is sure to hit the spot. Fridays on Morning Barbados. See you at 6. Thursdays just got beefed up on Morning Barbados. That's right, now we partner with the BADMC to do something for beef's sake. Learn more about quality Bajan beef, the Carmita's brand, and how you can enjoy it from the farm to your fork. If it's the right cut you're looking for, then for beef's sake, watch Morning Barbados every Thursday from 6.45 a.m. It's the beefiest 10 minutes on TV, brought to you in association with the BADMC. And we're back. Rising Stars are the 2017 champions of the FIBA 3-on-3 three -three basketball competition after defeating finalist Dream Chasers recently at the BCC Gym. The Stars had earlier defeated More Life in the second semi-final game 18-10, while in the first semi-final game Chasers defeated DCFM 16-13. In this first semi-final match, we have the Dream Chasers and the White taking on DC Film. Joel Hunt missing the free throw, but netting the layup and receiving another foul, which he converts to add the first points for the Chasers. Jonathan Fowler responded immediately with the fake, then the layup, but Chasers Justin Powell netted an easy layup of his own to widen the deficit. And as expected, DC FM found the needed points. Jonathan Dotting collects the rebound and converts and also receives the foul. Which he made no mistake at the free throw line, leveling the game at 3 all. The two teams kept an intense battle going throughout the entire game, scoring point for point, dotting with the jump shot for DC. Then Davion Hurley provides a quick pass to Kadeem Brathwaite, who converts the layup and Fowler with the long two into the net. But the chasers weren't done yet. Powell finds the bucket again to keep a three-point lead. 
Dream Chasers held on to that same three-point margin to take the game 16-13 to and be the first team to advance to the finals. The second semi-final between More Life in Black and Rising Stars. Theron King with the jump shot to open the scoring for More Life. And just seconds later, Kisarian Adams receives a foul and converts a free throw to keep the Stars in the game. Jerani Hurley had the answers for the Stars, landing a jump shot from way out to add two points. And he wasn't finished as yet. Hurley with another long two to his name. The Stars would go on to take the game 18 to 10 and advance to the finals with Rashid Maynard easily grabbing the final point of the game with a layup. Now to the highly anticipated finals between Rising Stars in the Orange and Dream Chasers. Maynard's opened the scoring for the Stars finishing with the layup but quick thinking by Powell saw the chasers leveling in no time as he converted an easy layup. Both teams were neck and neck early in the game. Maynard showing his offensive skills to grab another point. Then Joel Hunt finds the layup and gets the foul. Adams was not to be left out as he showed he had the finishes as well converting another two for the stars. The Chasers then followed up with a huge dunk by Pyle to get the crowd going. Bob Maynard brushed that aside with the long two from way outside. And guess what? Hurley showed he had the skills to grab two of his own. Both teams kept close to each other on the scorecard until this stage. Adams with the jump shot outside the box to collect two more. Then Braffitt finds Pyle with the pass and he produces another slam dunk for the chasers but the stars started to bridge the gap between the two teams Maynard with the big two as his team moved five points clear and the points kept coming for the stars Maynard with the layup and the foul which he converts to add the game to add to his game high 12 points the stars would go on to take the game 21-13 and the title to become the 2017 FIBA 3-on-3 three three champions. And uh, here are some of the events happening on Wednesday, September 20th. Royal Combined Youth will play RS hitters in the David Thompson Memorial T20 Tickball Competition at Gore Hill in St. John. The Women's Football League continues at the BFA Wildey AstroTurf with Mavericks taking on Unity Stars at 6 p.m. And the triple header in the Dover Cup Football Tournament with the game starting at 6.30 and 7.45 as well as 9 p.m. And that will be at the Dover playing field. And the BWU netball competition has four games on the netball stadium courts, one and two. And those games will be at 6 and 7 p.m. Well, that's it for tonight. Tuesday, I'm Sean Green. Do have a safe night. Bye-bye. CBC TV 8 in beautiful Barbados.